When pain comes, we usually think it's something out of the ordinary. Something's wrong. We want things to get back to the normal way they should be, which is with no pain. It's like we would like that to be normal, not having pain. But pain is normal. The fact that you have a body, the fact that you have a mind, the fact that you're a being leaves you exposed to pain. As a John Sowat once said, take an iron spike and you can stick it anywhere in the body and there's going to be pain. What's not normal is learning how to not suffer when there is pain. That's a special ability. That's what we're working on here. I've been reading a book about an Arctic explorer, one who was part Inuit, and so he was able to connect with the Inuit tribes, Inuit villages up in the far north. He was visiting with a shaman, and the shaman took him to see his old sister, who had been suffering from an illness for many years. He said, if you want to explain something to me with your great Western civilization, explain this. Why is she suffering? She was a good wife. She was a good mother. Then he went on to say, you ask, about, you ask us about our beliefs. It's not that we believe, we fear. We fear long illness like this. We don't fear death so much. We fear long illness. We fear the spirits of the dead, the dead animals that we've killed, the dead people we've known. Wherever you go in the world, this is the big problem. There is pain. There is suffering. And it is bewildering. Pain is something we usually don't think straight about. The Buddha saw it as one of his duties as a teacher was to end our bewilderment, to give us a sense of what could be done, should be done, and shouldn't be done around pain. And that should be done is we should try to comprehend it. And even further, try to comprehend that suffering in the mind that comes from the pain. When the Buddha talks about suffering, dukkha, you can also translate it as stress. There are basically two kinds. There's stress in the three characteristics, which is a given in the world. As long as things are put together, they're going to be malfunctioning. Things put together tend to fall apart. That's the nature. That's normal. But then there's, there's another kind of suffering, and that's the suffering of the Four Noble Truths. And that's the problem the Buddha is going to solve. The fact that the body has pain, he says, learn how to accept that. He himself would take medicine when he had to. But there are times when medicine wouldn't work with the pain. He said, learn to make, see a distinction between the pain that's just caused by the fact that things are put together and the pain that's caused by craving and clinging and ignorance. And it's that second one that you can actually change. That's what you can get rid of. We talk about the cessation of suffering. That's the suffering that we try to make cease. And we can learn how to do that. Then we're going out of the normal. The normal way of things is that people have pain, they suffer from the pain, and then they act under ignorance, trying to get rid of the pain, create more causes for pain. It just keeps going on and on and on. But to get out of the cycle, it's almost like you're cheating your past karma. You may have some past bad karma that leads to pain right now. But the fact that you learn how not to suffer from it, that's pretty clever. That's what's out of the ordinary. It's 
when we meditate, we're going against the ordinary flow of things, where we feel that the pain has invaded our space, and we have to suffer from it unless we drive it out. And as the Buddha says, we try to learn how to relate to it in a new way now, that it's there. But it is distinct from the mental suffering around it, not something that doesn't have to be there. When the Buddha talks about ignorance as the cause for suffering, he says ignorance of the Four Noble Truths. It's not so much ignorance of the words of the truths. We've all heard them. He's talking about not knowing what's going on while it's happening. Going, while it's happening. When craving comes into the mind, you don't see it clearly. When clinging comes, you don't see it clearly. That's what the suffering is, and yet you don't see it clearly. You're focusing on something else. You have other perceptions around it. One of the reasons we practice breath meditation is to get really sensitive to how our perceptions affect things. One of the steps that the Buddha said is to become sensitive to mental fabrication. Well, that's your feelings of ple pleasure, pain, neither pleasure nor pain, and the perceptions around them. Before you do that, he says, try to learn how to breathe in a way that gives rise to rapture, breathe in a way that gives rise to pleasure. And we give the mind a good foundation so it can look into the pain and not feel threatened by it. This is why we work with the breath in different parts of the body. Find the comfortable parts, focus there, get a sense of breathing that feels good there. Think of that sense of comfortable breathing spreading through other parts of the body. So you feel surrounded by a good feeling. And then you can look into the pain and ask yourself what kind of perceptions you have around it. Is it a big monolithic block? Is it the same thing as the spot in the body that's pained? Or is a sensation of body, i.e. the four elements of earth, water, wind, fire, is that one thing? Is the pain something else? And when you have a perception of pain, is it always there? Or does it come and go, and come and go, and come? When it comes, what happens? When it goes, what happens? Sometimes it comes and it reverberates for a bit, but there are times when it actually goes. And then you pick it up again, and it goes, and you pick it up again. You can ask yourself, do you have to pick it up? You can use perceptions around the pain that are a little bit counterintuitive. We feel that the pain has invaded our space. Well, what if we have invaded its space? We feel the pain is coming at us. What if it's actually going away from us? And our perceptions, what are they doing? Why does the mind have to talk to itself about the pain anyhow? One of the reasons is you think you've got to keep warning your future mind about the pain that's in the present so it doesn't do something stupid around the pain. It's as if you have a wound, and part of the mind has to keep reminding itself, watch out, you've got a wounded foot, you can't use it the way you used to. But those warnings that get passed on from one moment to the next to the next to the next, do you have to keep passing them on? What if you drop them for a bit? There are lots of questions you can ask around the perceptions around the pain, because it's the perceptions that cause you to cling, and the clinging is the suffering. So remember, pain is normal. The fact that the mind is suffering around the pain is normal. There's no question of why me. When pain comes, you have to remind yourself it comes to everybody. In fact, that's a useful contemplation when you're in pain. Remind yourself that everybody out there has pain one to some extent or another. Some people are 
the temporarily abled, as dis disabled people say. In other words, they're temporary pain free, temporarily pain free, but it's going to come. And you got to have compassion for everybody out there who's got pain. That helps you realize it was not just you. You don't feel like you're being singled out. Which recognize that the pain is normal. Maybe you have the karma that leads to that pain. Now the next question is, how can you cheat that karma? We may tend to think that the universe is unfair in the way it hands out pains. But maybe it's actually very fair. But the Buddha's path allows you to cheat the system. You can get out this path, the Eightfold Path. As the Buddha said, it's the path, the karma that puts an end to karma. Not only does it stop you from creating new karma, but also frees you from many of the effects of past karma. The pains may be there in the body, but the mind doesn't have to suffer, and that's what matters. It's like a big rock. The rock may be heavy in and of itself, but as long as you don't pick it up, it's not going to be heavy on you. Our problem is we're picking up all the rocks so we can see. And that's why we suffer. The Buddha is teaching us how we can just leave them alone. So if you can see, it's not so much that the pain is disturbing you, you're disturbing the pain. The pain isn't invading your territory, the pain is just there. You're the one invading the territory. And when you can see things like this, okay, you can get out of the system. At that point, whether it's fair or unfair, it doesn't matter anymore. You're out. That's the skill the Buddha is trying to teach us. And it's a skill we can all learn.